Hey, hello everybody. My name is Shanta and if you can come a little bit closer since it's a small group, you know, it would be really nice. I also want to let you know that uh, there will be a lot of samples later and uh, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I know it's a hot day. Maybe we can open the window or window something. I don't know how to leave this open. Can we leave this open? Yeah, keep it. I'll put a chair on it. Put a chair on it. Could, could I have a chair? It's kind of stuffy today. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. So my name is Shanta, and I just want to let you know that in here, there is a introduction of me that happens to be cut and paste from the wrong person. So, <laughs> yeah, so don't go by that because I don't do any nutritional counseling, but this gives me an opportunity to let you know what I do do when I'm not doing a demo. Okay, so I am a worker owner of Other Avenues Food Co-op which is on 44th and Judah, about uh, 36 blocks away from here. And all the spices and ingredients I'll be using today, you can purchase there. Most of our ingredients that we sell are organic. And uh, a lot of our spices are either wild crafted or organic. It's a wonderful store. If you haven't been there, please uh, make a try. It's called Other Avenues. And the yellow flyer will give you 10% discount for the first time. If you send here, you get automatically 10% discount every day. Okay? That being said, what I do there and what the store does, I think that it's really important because I have been doing cooking demonstration for the Veg Society and the World Vegetarian Day for almost as many years as the fair has been. I think I missed only once, right, JC? Yeah, the first right. one. And what I really like about uh, the World Vegetarian Day, Day has become a weekend, it's now more of a movement, it's not just a festival, it's become so widely spread, it's become political, it's become socially significant. Similarly, uh, where I work, which is a worker cooperative, co-ops have become really very significant too. They have come and gone just like vegetarianism comes in style, then it goes in style. Remember in the 60s when people really were carrying like a planet for a, uh, diet for a small planet like it was their Bible. And then in the 80s, it became like a little bit more uh, silent, but people still had an interest in eating vegetarian food, or at least not meat-centered. Because one of the things that I hear is, okay, the traditional diet in America is meat-centered, which is actually a fallacy. It's a modern diet in America and Europe that is meat-centered, because the traditional diet all over the world has been more agriculture. And I would even go further than that, that traditionally people are meant to be eating vegetables and fruits. They are supposed to be vegetarian. Similarly, traditionally people are supposed to be cooperative. I think somehow the co-ops and vegetarianism goes together or that's how I have rationalized my life and I don't think that that's such a bad idea. Um, anyway, what we're going to do today is um, simple soup with vegetables and it has a lentil base. It is from South India, but I have kind of made my California version of sambar. I tried to make this soup last year actually, and I never repeat what I do for the Veg Society, except it was such a fiasco because it was in the other room and there was a lot going on and all the vendor and the noise. I just couldn't really do my demo. and the. Uh, apparatus didn't work, although we are not going to be using this very long, but hopefully it will work. What I'm making, I have also made a big batch, so don't forget to take your sample. I'm going to be serving it in a, a large cup, and along with that, you can have some chai too. Okay, so that's today's menu, sambar and chai. Okay, so enjoy it after it's done. 
Okay, I'm going to pass something and I need some uh, volunteers help. So these are, and you can bring it back when you're done. These are four of the um, dal ingredients. The word dal, and sambar is a kind of dal by the way. Sambar is synonymous to dal with vegetables. So the word dal in Indian cuisine means two things. One is anything that's split into half is called dal. Okay, you can split, you know, little gold nugget into half and that's called dal. Okay, but when it refers to a dish, dal, in addition to something that's been split into half because it makes the cooking and digestion easier, it also refers to something that's served with rice and or chapati or any kind of bread. So it has a culinary two meaning. One is bean or rather lentil, which is a small bean, cut into half to make it easier to cook and easier to digest. And also second thing is that it is something that you cook. It could be like really porridge-like, thick enough to serve it on the side of the dish. Or it could be really, really thin, almost like consomme, and served in the beginning of the meal. Or like a sambar, it's like a uh, meal in a pot because it has a lot of vegetables and the base for that is uh, the dal. So the dish that I'm passing around has four different beans. Two of them are not split. It's mung bean and urad bean, U-R-A-D. Now urad bean is uh, used particularly south uh, just like wheat and uh, other grains are used in the north. So urad is very important. It's a really good source of protein. Mung bean you can find all over India. Now the red lentil is called um, masoor in India, and here you can find it any uh, grocery store. You don't even have to go to a health food store. So red lentil makes a really good base for any kind of dal. Now if you go camping and you have a desire to make Indian food and you happen to have some spices, you can even use brown lentil to make dal. Okay, so dal just means it's a soup that has some Indian spices and it has also been cooked enough to make it digestible. So dal is something protein based dish that we give to babies. And of course you don't use spice, that many spices when you make it for toddlers. Okay, so you take some dal out before you put the spices for children. So those are the four beans that are very easy to find. I think that you, urad is the only one that you probably have to go to an Indian shop. The, oh, this might be too. This looks like a split pea, but it's actually um, dal, uh, made out of what they call pigeon pea, or tur dal, T-O-O-R. So usually the base for the soup that we are making today, sambar, is tur dal. But I know that you may be able to find the masoor more easily. This is the red lentil. That's what I made it from. So I put like about three-fourth uh, masoor and one-fourth tur. So I made a combination. But you can do either or. So the tur dal, you have to go to a specialty store. Urad, you have to go to a specialty store. But the mung, you can find anywhere, even in a Chinese shop. And, of course, the masoor is... Uh, kind of like brown lentil you can find everywhere. Okay? This make yes sir. Um, I heard that the corn dal has some kind of a oily coating that you can You can these days buy tur dal without oil coated or with the oil coated. What the reason why they use the oil is to preserve the um, life of the dal because once you take the skin off and you split it into half, it's not going to last as long as the whole bean. So the oil is a safe preservative. However, if you happen to buy tur dal that's oily, rinse it out thoroughly with very, very hot water. In fact, what I do is I start my tur dal in two parts. One of the part, I have the tur dal with the oil and the second part of water that's boiling. So I just transfer after draining it. Okay. We have a volunteer for you. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Hey. All right. right now? You can go right here, so if I need something from the kitchen, that would be really wonderful. Thank you. What's your name? Dominique. Dominique. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Okay. So, okay. So, to get you started, what I need from there, Dominique, is a pot that has some dal already that's made. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, what I did is I already made the dal. That is soft enough. Can you take this, it's not hot, and show it to people. This is how much it should be cooked. It's like if you touch it, it will fall apart. 
before you put the vegetables in there, okay? And the reason is that after it has become that soft, it will take the um, flavor as well as the nutrient of the vegetable. So then the dal will get immersed with the vegetables and the vegetables will get some of the dal juice and makes a really nice combination. So okay, hopefully this is working. Okay, so I am going... I rinse all my beans, all my rice always. So it's been rinsed, but this one you don't have to do what I say. It was only the oily dal that you have to start with two waters. I used hot water to, to rinse it and then I drained it. I forgot, I was going to say, do you soak your dal overnight? I'm um, I think it's a good idea to soak the mung bean, the whole mung bean, or the urad bean for several hours or overnight because that cuts down on your time and fuel. But the dal you don't have to. Like this dal cooks just like this within half an hour. It took me half an hour to cook it like this, maybe even less. Okay. So what I'm going to do in here is first I'm going to put a little oil to fry some onion. Actually, you're going to get two lessons today instead of one because when you make fried vegetable Indian style, it's very similar to this. And this is going to be kind of more like for demonstration so you can adjust a little bit more oil or a little bit less oil as you like. I have chop more of most of the vegetables from home. So I like to chop my onion very finely. In fact, I think they invented food processor just for the onion. I need a stirring spoon if you can find me, please. Um, so the onion needs to get a little bit soft. I haven't figured this one out. It's highest, okay, it should work. And then I'm going to have the ginger ready. I do not peel ginger, but I make sure that it's washed. And then what's really nice, instead of mincing, if the recipe calls for minced ginger, just use the um, cheese teeth from the gra veggie grater, okay? So the reason is that it cuts the ginger diagonally and gets more flavorful. In addition to that, all the hair stays in your palm. So if I grated the whole thing, my hand will have lots of hair from the ginger and I'll throw that away. This one has no hair, okay? So this is what I'm going to be using in here. This goes in the dal. So after the onion is a little bit translucent, I'm going to put a little garlic. If I could find my garlic. I also want to show you all the spices that will go in there, okay? I'm going to keep these two because they're unusual, okay? I don't know what happened to my garlic. This is what happens when you have to take things out. So we are going to pretend garlic, although I have garlic in the recipe that I'm going to make for you. One thing that I didn't chop in advance is eggplants because as you know, it gets discolored. So what you want to do with this is cut it into a circle or half a circle and then just cut into sugar cube size or maybe a little bit smaller. It's a good idea to cut everything fairly small for this recipe. The reason is that if they're smaller they will immerse in the dal and get the dal flavor in them and the dal will get the veggie flavor. So in the order, it doesn't really matter how you're going to put it, but I wanted to tell you something that instead of chopping you can just separate the cauliflower and black broccoli into florets. The texture is sometimes important because like people say you don't eat just with your fingers and you don't just you know enjoy your food by tasting it but with your eyes as well. It just so far just the onion I haven't put the spices. <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you. So there are two spices that goes in here that I want to show you. This is going to be going later, okay? This is going to go in the uh, part of that. And this is tamarind, okay? You probably haven't seen this unless you live in the, na you know, like a um, Latin neighborhood. But actually you can find fresh tamarind in a, a store that's on Irving and 22nd. Wow. You know, it's called Andy's or something. 
Tamarind. Tamarind. Okay. So, yeah, fresh tamarind. The way to use it, this is, it looks brown and the skin is very crinkly like this. Okay. Andes. Andes, yeah. It's, it's a vegetable store on 22nd and Irving. It's also called 22nd and Irving. Yeah. So this is what you have in your hand. And then you take the fibers out like this. All right. Okay. This is your tamarind. Although this is not all edible portion. What you have to do is cut into two, three pieces. And then you soak it in hot water, okay, in a cup like this or whatever you have. Soak it in hot water and then you rub it in your hand. So what is going to happen is that the water will become as thick as honey or maybe a little bit thicker, maybe a little bit thinner depending on how much water you use. So it's that water that you are going to use to flavor the dal. Mm -hmm. What remains in the cup is this really, really a hard almost tooth size and as hard as the tooth uh, seed. So each section of the tamarind has one of those seeds. So you don't want to use that. So that will remain in the, in the cup that you're soaking the water. You're just going to use the water. Once this is, um, all the oil and the onion has been coated, that's when you put the powder spices. And I think that the three, four powder spices that you'll be using all the time is turmeric and cumin and coriander and chili. And that is cayenne. Now the cayenne will come into, you can take this out. Everybody's seen this, right? Okay, this is when it's going to go in the dal. I don't want people to start coughing because there's not good ventilation. So this goes in here. Okay. So the only other thing that will go in there is some cilantro and some lemon juice, which I have inside the um, refrigerator, and uh, some salt. That is all. Now there's one more thing. There's a final step that we need to do in here. I'm just going to pretend that this has been cooked for 10 minutes, okay? So 10, 15 minutes is this thing goes, goes back because we don't have too much time or facility here and I don't want to inconvenience people. What tamarind, what flavor does that add? It's sweet and sour. Sweet. Yeah, so if you don't have tamarind, you can use uh, lime juice and brown sugar or honey, okay? Okay, one more, one more step that still remains in making dal, and we believe that that's what sets the dal apart from your minestrone soup, which also has a lot of um, vegetables, or your Greek lentil soup that also could have vegetables. What makes Indian dal different is vagar, and that's spelled V-A-D-H-A-R or V-A-G-H-A-R, depending on how you pronounce it. The only English translation of vagar is tempering. I don't know if you have ever come across that word. T-A-M-P-E-R, tempering. And there's yet another word that I cannot remember that's more like South Indian. What you do in tempering or vagar is you take a small cup, okay? And it has to be a small cup with a handle. So I think that's in the kitchen if you don't mind finding it for me. It's like a little measuring cup. It was right there somewhere in the corner, maybe. If not, I have to use this. So in order to make vagar, buy yourself a measuring cup that's made out of metal. And pretty soon you'll know why that has to be so. Oh, I also wanted to show you that tamarind, if you can't deal with this or can't find it, easier to find in this form, okay? This one, they have already done the work for you, so you don't have, you still have to soak it, but you don't have to mess with uh, peeling it and taking the fiber out and having to worry about leaving any of the seeds that are really hard. So I'm going to pass this around. Thank you, we found it, we are saved. Okay, I still don't know what happened to a garlic. So this has to get really, really hot. This is the tempering or the vagar step. 
Also be prepared with a lid for the sambar. This is not liquid enough and again I said I have fully made sambar enough for everybody but this is what it looks like and this will be cooking for about 20 more minutes before I would eat it. Hot oil. For this particular step what you need is black mustard seeds and then I'm going to use a whole cumin, whole cumin seeds. They're going to mix with the black mustard seeds which is fine because we are going to be using together. And then these are the chilies. This is cayenne, pepper but they're whole. So for this step you want them whole. You don't want them powder. Okay. And then the last one I'm going to pass this around is called asa fatida. I think only Indian and Pakistani cuisine uses it. But actually maybe African cuisine uses it because I was looking up asa fatida and it's originally from Africa. So maybe they use it too. It's made out of gum resin. It grows on a tree, a specific tree as a wart. So it's like a rock, you know. So they have to have special grinding stone. And they usually mix it with a little rice flour. So if you are wheat uh, allergic, make sure that it says rice flour instead of wheat flour. This one is gluten free. Is, is the cayenne pepper when you got a label is two or three whole dry red hot chilies? That's it. Okay. okay. It, they, they could be any other chili, but this happened to be cayenne. Okay, so when it gets this, you know the mustard seeds start making noise. They're popping. And when this gets a little smoky, put just a pinch of uh, hing. Hing is asa fatida. See this noise? And we call it chum. C-H-U-M. Okay, that means it's full stop. The dal is done. Okay. This one is also something, um, jalapeno pepper or serrano pepper you can use chopping finely that goes in the dal before ahead. What the chili that I just used in the wagar, what that does, it, it just kind of acts like a bouquet garni because you are going to take it out. But in India, instead of taking out before serving, you leave it in the dal so whoever gets it has to make the dinner next day. <laughs> so if you get one, you have to come to my house and make me dinner. So anyways, we didn't really use proportionally everything because I didn't know how everything was going to turn out. I'm also a little bit afraid of the apparatus here. You never know when it's going to start a fire. Tomato is something that goes, adds flavor as well that I usually put the tomatoes last. And one thing that we didn't put that I forgot is um, the coconut. Coconut kind of balances out the sourness of the emily or the tamarind. Okay, so now if you have any question, you can ask me or else we will start serving. <clears throat> in terms of the ginger, sometimes I buy ginger cut up and it's rather green. Is that, is that because it's old or new? It's new. It's and good. It's yeah, yeah. Sometimes it will have a little shoot that's yeah. pink or green. That is fine ginger. In fact, it will be less hairy. The newer the ginger, the less the hair it has. I wash it first. I never uh, skin my ginger, and a lot of Indian people don't. And then I just use this tooth. If I were to make something really, really like for um, a dip, then I would use this because I want it really fine. But usually, this is good for cooking with ginger. I have a cookbook that's a vegetarian cookbook. It's in seventh printing. I am selling this here or at my booth over at other avenues booths, so come and visit me. And when you get more hungry, come and we have a lot more sambar that we made. Okay. Do you send cooked food? We don't sell cooked food, I just bring it here for the fair. Yeah, yeah, we, use, we just uh, sell. The only cooked food, the only food we um, sell there is raw food because we don't have a cooking license. So we do have some things we make like salsa and tahuna and there's some sweets that we make that are made out of raw food. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, for the, 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 for
the uh, sambar instead of tour dal, would there be much, could you also use the chana dal or yellow split peas or some of the other? You ones? can combine them too. In fact, I think that the restaurants, to make it cheaper, they do use split peas. I don't like split peas. I rather use the masur, which means the red lentil, as a substitute. Because of the taste? I think it tastes better. It cooks faster and it's more available organic. Although you can buy organic um, split peas as well. Yes, Chase. Uh, I like to eat the uh, bara with my uh, sambar. Are you going to have a class of on making bara? Uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, yes. <laughs> What's bara? It's um, vada, did you say, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a bread. It's South Indian bread. South Indian food is actually really good if you are wheat allergic because they don't use as much wheat. Yeah. Yes? Oh, you can use olive oil. The question was, can you, when you fry it, you can use very little oil. You know, it's almost like you can use as little as a teaspoon. It could be any oil, really. Olive oil, oil is fine. Or even no oil. Uh, it, it's hard to do this, this step without, yes, this but good. I have had a heart patient who, who just popped his mustard without oil. Yeah. <coughs> What's that? Use water. No, water, no, it won't. Just heat. Yeah, it won't pop. They, they, water smothers the mustard yeah. seeds. Just but the heat alone, especially if you have like a, one of those in Taflon pan, which I hate Taflon. Yeah, I don't like Taflon. But cast iron would work. Where can you get a cup? like that? Oh, this cup? Oh, you can get it. They're, they're very common. In fact, I would prefer if it didn't have a plastic handle because you know what you can do if it had the metal handle? You can put the whole thing inside and cover it right away and just keep the cup and all, you know? But it, you don't have, because that way the smokiness, which is supposed to like leave a veneer, does not escape. All smoky flavor, okay. Yeah, it's, it's too, yes. And then you come back later and you take out the red chilies. All right, everybody ready to eat? That's no, okay. The way I cook my spice, my Indian food is I uh, I roast, I uh, I use oil and put the spices, and then before I put the vegetables, yours is a different way. A little bit different. Yeah, you know each. Sure, sure. Uh, the only thing that I would advise, you can, you know, follow your own recipe or your own desire or your own intuition. The only thing I do want to emphasize, when you stir fry something with the oil, put the onion first, and if you have onion and pepper, put the pepper next, because they both have an edge to it, and frying in oil makes it sweet and, you know, allows the onionness to dissipate. You know, some people don't like it. It doesn't have that raw onion taste to it. And then next, put the garlic, because onion has more juice, it has more liquid, and garlic is drier, so that way the garlic won't burn. So in the order of onion, pepper, garlic, I'd go onion first, then pepper, then garlic, and then the rest. Okay. 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 How can you tell? One, you mentioned one of the, uh, the dolls had oil. One dish. How can you tell which one has the oil? Oh, if you go to a restaurant, you mean? No, to buy it. If you want to buy it. Oh, I see. It. The oil even looks very opaque. You, I, I'm sorry, I don't have um, with me. I should have brought it. There's no way you wouldn't tell. Oily looks really oily. Okay. Like if you put in your hand, rub your hand, your hands would get oily. It looks opaque, whereas the one without oil. I think it's easier to find now without oil because the transportation, how fast these things come from Asia. It's improved, so they don't have to use oil as much. So you can buy this uh, in bulk at different stores? You can buy them, yeah. I, yeah, I unfortunately do not know that many stores here, so there are more in Berkeley, but there are a couple of um, stores that I can tell you about where they have all these things. But my own store has uh, the organic mung bean, we even have split mung, and we have the um, masoor dal or the red lentil. And I teach cooking, so you have my uh, classes in the back of the recipe, 
So, and I only take eight to ten people. It's all hands-on. You get to do everything, including the vagar. So, come and do some cooking with me. Okay. Where is your store? It's on 44th and Judah. The address is on the oh, yellow flyer. Store, yes. Ten percent off. Yes. Great store and Carmen Lee took both of her uh, classes, and she highly recommends it. My friend. Right. Yeah. She, she was in my yeah. class. And, and uh, the recipes could be made vegan, too. Yeah. Yes. Ma majority of the Indian food really has very little um, dairy in it. And when I make it, I always have somebody who is vegan in my class. So I always make sure that I have vegan chai. And secondly, I always make sure that yeah, that's what I served you yesterday. And I have some more today. It's vegan chai. Yes. You, you couldn't tell? It's wonderful. That's a compliment. Soy milk. Yes. Yes. Um, and I don't just say substitute this with this. I make parallel vegan dish for anything that I have, little yogurt or whatever. So if I make a chutney that has a yogurt, I make a parallel uh, chutney using whatever substitute or whatever parallel ingredient is. So I don't just say that you can substitute. I want you to have the vegan experience. Do you put sugar in the chai or do you I do it traditionally, which is, but I put very little sugar because soy milk is already sugared. Yeah, yeah. yeah sweetened, so you, very little. Can you boil the soy milk just like regular? Just like, yeah, two parts water, one part soy milk. And it boils? And you, curdle. yeah, it does not curdle, curdle. yeah. Yeah. In fact, it keeps even without refrigerator. It keeps much longer. Yeah, it, of course, it gets cold. Have it at home. Yes. I've never tried it. Yes. Any any other questions? All right. Wonderful. Well, I am going to pass some um, sambar.